Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. So I'm going to go. Okay. Mr. Cupcake, your ass is mine. Uh, the joke is, what does the cupcake say in response to that? The cupcake says, uh, your ass is where I'll be after you eat me. <laughs> Crazy. Um, you know, as someone who used to be number one person in the world, uh, tech support for MacBook Air uh, on uh, Apple, um, I love the irony of the fact that I'm using like a, a chalkboard from uh, Little House on the Prairie, it is a genuinely like a 180-year-old uh, slate chalkboard that some school child used. They used it so much that uh, they, uh, their hand even carved out a notch over there from holding it. God knows how many decades. Um, anyway, um, as I showed you in a prior video, I'm actually going to take a, comp a topic that befuddles the hell out of people. And I always love, maybe it's because I'm fat and lazy, I always love... Uh, and to believe that the simplicity is divinity that nobody else can really explain, yet it's really very simple. And a uh, lack of uh, thinking cool ways to think about something so you're able to remember it. Now, uh, in flash photography, whether that be portraiture, indoor or outdoor, but specifically outdoor, and you're talking about a subject matter and you got a speed light in hand, uh, hopefully it's not sitting on the top of your camera because that hot shoe, while it will hold a flash, is not meant to hold a flash. That means get your damn flash off your camera. You got a remote trigger or a, a, a SC17 or SC29 flash cable connected to your hot shoe of your camera. Get your speed light off your camera, whether it's sitting on a light stand or whether it's in your hand, doesn't matter. The point is that what befuddles people is uh, thinking about what they need to expose for, what they can do. Now, uh, why don't you take a look at this little chart. One thing that befuddles people especially is uh, if they want to get a uh, shallow depth of field, say they got some lens uh, f2 or below, and uh, typically uh, most DSLRs uh, max out at one four thousandth of a second on the shutter, you're going to have to use an ND filter. But really we're talking about 15% or less, actually less, of situations where you're going to have to drop an ND filter if you want that shallow depth of field and you're already at one four thousandth of a second it's an ISO 100 and your camera is still saying eh, you know too much light and uh, then you know you're gonna have to step up and get an indie filter so we're not gonna be talking about that we're gonna talk about 85 percent of every other situation where you do have control as I was showing you before it's a gloomy nasty day outside and I was gonna go on location to a couple different spots, the Arboretum and uh, to the cemetery, which actually has beautiful places to uh, to demonstrate this as so far as what you can do when you have your background and your subject matter, whether that's a model, whether it's an insect and macro, um, whatever it is that is within uh, shooting range of your speed light, what can you do? You know, uh, do you have necess necessitatively uh, even exposure value so you have a sunlit subject and uh, your background and your subject are absolutely identical, but, uh, you know, you don't have the uh, ability to, uh, uh, you don't bring your ND filter with you and uh, you want to drop the background lighting, say it's like 4 p.m. and, uh, you know, it's bright as the Dickens or it's still bright and it's overcast. What can you do to bring down that value to give emphasis? Because the whole thing is about transferring what is here into your camera. Your camera is a stupid POS. It doesn't know anything other than to create gray sludge like a baby poop uh, found in a baby diaper. I mean, that's all any camera is designed to do. It has no idea what is between your ears here. And uh, once you can immediately translate what's here to the back of your camera, then you can concentrate on your composition and your lighting. And that's really a really beautiful uh, point in time where your camera becomes an irrelevant tool. I mean, it is, uh, you know, it is uh, underneath your foot and you're concentrated on your art. Okay, not what the camera does. You know, it's like some people just, 
you know, they could sit there and study the camera and they're just constantly rolling the dice, like, oh my god, camera, make a beautiful shot. Well, it, you know, that's no good, that gets frustrating and it's going to frustrate you and you're going to end up hating photography because, you know, same thing as Las Vegas, you didn't build a multi-billion dollar city in, in the middle of the desert by giving money away. The house always wins and if you roll the dice with your camera, your camera is always going to win and it's going to dominate you and you're going to end up hating your camera and hating photography. So, you're going to have to learn these important tips. So, what specifically were you talking about? Raising your subject or dropping your background. Now, it depends on what you want to do. You have even exposure, uh, say, between your subject and your background. It is uh, illuminated. But you want to drop the background. You didn't bring an indie filter. Stick your camera in manual mode, not aperture priority, not shutter priority, but in manual mode. Say, you, you know what you're starting out, this is what you'll do to make things easy. You know, take an exposure reading off of, uh, you say you have an even exposure between your background and your subject. It's going to perfectly illuminate everything in that instance. Okay, what is it? Uh, uh, two hundredth of a second at f8. Okay, drop it into manual mode. Okay. Uh, uh, increase your shutter, say, to uh, f16 or f11, whatever it is you want to drop your background. Ultimately, you can drop everything into the gutter. This is the easiest way to think about it. Whatever you want, you can drop it into the gutter as long as you know that you need to raise your subject matter up to the level of your flash illumination. I can make daylight look like dark. Okay, if you got a speed light on your subject matter, or I can make it look like dusk and then raise my subject level to whatever I want. Now, your speed light can't control the background. Obviously so. So we're talking about either dropping everything in the dirt and bringing your subject up or splitting the difference. What is it that you want to do? Do you want to take the background and make it look like, uh, you know, uh, sunset? Do you want to completely drop the background? or drop it most of the way and then raise your subject matter up for emphasis. What sort of composition are you going for? As long as you understand where your background and your subject are and what you want to do here, the only thing you have to think about is this, two different things, your background and your subject. So you have five stops of difference. You know, your subject, your, your subject is backlit. You know, the sun's coming from behind and your subject is five stops of difference here. Okay, well, I'm going to drop the background to the dirt. Say I want an evening shot. My subject is horribly backlit. I have no way of moving because they're standing on a cliff edge. What the hell am I going to do? I don't have a reflector with me. You know, an indie filter isn't going to do you any good. All that's going to do is drop your subject even further. you got five stops or six stops of dynamic range difference between your background and your backlit subject. So what are you going to do? you got a speed light with you, correct? A wireless trigger or it's on your SC-17 flash cable. What are you going to do? What do you want? I'm going to drop everything into the dirt. What do I mean by that? It means I'm going to drop everything. Subject and background, five or six stops. I can raise my subject up to whatever it is I want. I can take that, you know, horrible 5 p.m. light. I can dial in uh, six stops on my aperture. You know, go, uh, you know, from f5.6 up to 16 or whatever I want. Okay, now I've subdued the background illumination without the use of an ND filter. It's like, well, now my subject was in the dark, now it's even further in the dark. It doesn't, get, doesn't matter. It doesn't, get, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay? You drop everything into the gutter as long as you bring your subject up to the level that you want and you're exposing your background to what you want. Okay? This is really simple. You only have to think about two things. Raising your subject to the light level that you want and dropping the background to the level that you want. Obviously, your speed light isn't going to affect your background. So you're going to expose for your background and then you're going to raise your subject to whatever you want. In the instance that I just gave you where we don't have a background subject to even illumination, that's easy to figure out. Obviously so. But you're worried about your subject, which is horribly backlit. It's like, well, if I drop everything, that's going to affect my subject. Yeah, but you're going to be using your speed light for that. You're going to be raising your subject up level up to the level that you want, whether that's rim light, perfectly even uh, illumination. Whatever sort of uh, composition that you have here between your ears, you're going to be able to control. Like I said, there's going to be some instances where if you want a shallow depth of field and you've got your shutter at uh, four thousandth of a second maxed out and ISO 100, then you're going to have an issue. You're going to have to have an ND filter, and then you're going to be limited. You can't have that shallow depth of field and uh, that composition that you want. So that's something else. Like I said, we're talking about 85% of everything else. Uh, secondly, we're going to expose for B, i.e. background, and uh, for subject, we want to raise and light for. So, 
Easiest way to think about it is when it's first exposed. We're talking about two layers of light. You're talking about your ambient light, and we're talking about what you're adding, the primary light layer. And as you actually progress on this, this stuff is going to become so um, subconscious to you, you're going to start working on uh, uh, sec uh, secondary and uh, tertiary layers of light. You're not going to be thinking about your ambient and your primary subject illumination. You're going to be thinking deeper, like a chess player. Like when chess players first start out, and I played chess for years and years, is you'll think like two moves ahead. And when you get more skilled at it, you'll be thinking five moves ahead. I mean, I trust me, everybody does the same thing in chess, and the same thing that happens in chess is going to happen in your lighting. You're going to be able to think three, four layers into your illumination. And once you can do that, my God, man, the results just, they, they just rock and roll. And then you'll be a level above anybody else. And you'll be doing immediately what's in here. Okay, you won't be a slave to your camera. The camera will be a slave to you. So you're going to raise your subject, your S, and illuminate for it. And B, you're going to expose first and foremost for your background. You're going to raise it or lower it to wherever you want. What that does to the subject with the present ambient lighting is a given. But you're going to raise your subject level up to what you want using your speed light. Um, so you're going to expose for S for composition and secondarily uh, you're going to expose B for background for effects. So you're going to first expose for effect on your background and then you're going to expose for your subject matter for your composition whether that's rim light you know whatever sort of compositional idea that you actually have in your head um, we're leaving out indie filters on this since we're talking about 85% of uh, situations um, outdoors uh, where you actually have your ambient and you have a, a dynamic range that is way off on your background or your subject or they're, maybe they're both the same but in either case this is the issues that people run into and this is where speed light saves your ass and uh, it uh, not only saves your ass but it lets you translate what is here into your shot. Say you've got a beautiful shot uh, but you know there's some sort of horrible nastiness off in the background. I mean I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a morgue or something or who knows what the hell it is. It's a pile of people and uh, you uh, are not trying to uh, go for the effect of uh, shallow depth of field but for subject isolation. Well you're going to have your camera in manual. You're going to drop the background so you lose that in illumination but you're going to raise the subject up with your uh, with your speed light. And, uh, you know, I, I showed you in the prior video, I mean, pack around and speak. I mean, you, you, people keep thinking about lenses. I need this lens and that lens. It's all about lighting. And uh, really, you know, 95% of professional photography, not talking about landscapes or shooting, you know, an eagle a thousand yards away. You know, you can have, you can have a big-ass studio strobe with a portable power pack, and, you know, that ain't going to help you with landscape photography and wildlife photography. But for everything else... You know, this really is 95% of professional photography is having those lighting tools. And those tools, A, don't cost that much, and learning them is not anywhere near as difficult. I mean, today it's digital photography, for God's sakes. It's not like you have to take the film home and process it like I had to do for years and years. Like, oh, crap, this is what I did wrong, and you wrote it down, what you did. On Next time I'll do that. You know, shit, you, can, it's, you sit there and chimp on your pictures like, okay, I screwed that, so I'm going to adjust it a stop or two. Um, my speed light, or I'm actually going to change my depth of field by increasing my aperture, or I want to drop the background a little bit more and raise my subject up some. Go out and fail. I mean, it's really this simple. All you're talking about is uh, two uh, principles. Your primary, uh, your ambient, you expose to your background, and then you're going to raise your subject up and do what you want with it compositionally how you decide. So ultimately... You're able to translate what is in here to that uh, compact flash card or to that SD card. It's really that simple. So, And like I said, if you have like a five-stop difference or six-stop difference between your background and your subject, like a horribly uh, backlit um, scene, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, the person's blacked out. You know, we got some strong light. You know, the light is beautiful, but, uh, you know, no problem. Exposed for the background, raised for the subject. Just think about that. Expose for the background, raise for the subject. And if it requires you drop everything into the ditch, well, I'm going to, you know, i got too strong a back, back, uh, background illumination. I'm going to drop it six stops uh, in manual. Oh, well, that's going to throw my subject into the dirt. doesn't matter. That's what your speed light's there for. You're going to be exposing for your subject. But you're going to, uh, you know, you're, you're raising that light and exposing for your subject. 
but uh, you first need to think about your ambient, what you want your ambient to be, and you're going to have to mentally picture that. I mean, that's one another thing that's going to happen to you, is you're going to not be able, you're not going to start seeing pictures with your eyes, you're going to see what they can be. It's like, well, this is a beautiful scene, but if I drop the background, then my ambient force stops, and I raise my subject matter a bit, then this is going to be an awesome shot. Otherwise, you're sitting there like, click, you know, it's a great exposure. Yeah, it looks like a damn snapshot from a cell phone. So this is what separates out of amateur photography from professional photography. So it really is that simple. I mean, you're just looking at uh, two balls on a slider here. One's your background, your secondary is your subject. You're going to raise or lower each one, each one uh, independent of one another. And uh, the only way you're going to be able to do that is with a speed light. Okay? With the speed light. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sometimes a bit verbose, but uh, I'll blame it on uh, having a cold, whatever, a toot your horn. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go attack that uh, cupcake right now and uh, catch you later. Bye.